Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes, can see. Everybody. So you can just show me with the sign language which number is the right answer. Is it number one, number three, or A, B, C, like that? So true or false? So if it is true, you show me thumbs up. If it is false, you show me thumbs down. <clears throat> oh, let me pray, let me pray first. <laughs> I'm having fun here already. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious opportunity, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this privilege of learning of your kingdom, the most important subject Jesus and the apostles preached. I thank you for the mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation to come upon us right now and holy spirit to bear witness for every word that i speak father for the glory of your kingdom and our king jesus lord i thank you for opening our ears our eyes and our understanding to see to know and to understand your plan and your purpose for our life and why you created this planet earth and put us here father and we give you all the glory and praise for this privilege. We love you, my God. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. So here is the first amen. true or false. We study the kingdom because life is all about making it to heaven. False. It's false. Life is much more than making it to heaven. We have a purpose to fulfill before we leave this planet. We study the kingdom because finally we can have a position and power to rule over others. It's false. Anybody's face here, let me. Uh, yeah, it's thumbs down, it's false. <laughs> We study the kingdom because it will help us become rich and famous. <laughs> False. Jesus preached about church planting and singing more than any other subjects while he was on the earth. False. No. False. False. <laughs> God's purpose keep changing based on who is ruling our country. False. False. God's purpose never changes. We learned God's three eternal purposes last week. The first and last chapters of the Bible say we will be singing in heaven forever and ever. False. False. Let me just lend Paula in. Which one describes our purpose better? Singing, helping the poor, ruling, being faithful member of a church. Which number? Number three, ruling. That describes our purpose better. Our provision is connected to number one, our education. Number two, purpose in the kingdom family we were born, the economy of the country we live in. Number two, purpose in the kingdom. Kingdom economy thrives in any country, in any economy of this world. It never goes through recession or have a bad day. Which one has the solution to the problem our country is facing? The political party, the universities, the kingdom of God, or the mega churches? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Wow, you guys are getting A plus in everything. <laughs> <laughs> this, this earth was created for a place to conduct music concerts for the devil and his kingdom came out in explosion or to be an extension of God's kingdom. 
to be, to an, be an extension of God's kingdom. kingdom or to be an extension of God's kingdom next one as humans we can't live without a kingdom movies toilet paper or church a kingdom a kingdom very good we study the kingdom so that we can quickly go to heaven wait for the rapture understand our purpose or take over the world understand our purpose Right. And our purpose. purpose. Excellent. We don't take over the world. We don't use that phrase. I don't use that phrase. We are about no. living out our purpose, calling and gifts. As a result, things will change in a country. Which one is true? God is eternally a worship leader, a king, king, king. A king. king. or a leader? King. 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 That's what he is, eternally a king. The word Adam came from the Hebrew word Adama, Adama, Cordable, or Adam. Adama. Adam. Adam. Number two. Adama. Yeah, you are. So that is the end of lesson number one. Reflect equals 10. Let me pull up the other screen. Hi, Paula. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, I, ha I have a, a meeting that ended at six, so I, then I flow right in. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so this is where we entered last week. God created Adam and put him in a place called the Garden of Eden. The third God's eternal purpose is everything God creates has a purpose and a place and a built-in function to fulfill that purpose. That is very important to understand as we're learning about God's kingdom. If we miss that one, we miss everything else. So I want to repeat that one more time. Everything God creates has a specific purpose and a place where it belongs and a function, built-in function to fulfill that purpose. For example, the sun that God created, you know, we are experiencing summer in majority of the part of the world, except South Africa, it is winter there. When, the, when God created the sun, he defined its purpose to rule over the day, to divide the day, the night, days, seasons, years, months, then he built in a function within that sun to fulfill its purpose. What is his purpose? To create, to produce energy and light and rule over the day. The sun doesn't struggle to fulfill its purpose. Every day it comes up. Whether we wake up 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock, the sun is faithful because God created it and he put that sun in a place and he built in a function to fulfill that purpose. That is the way our God operates. If you take a bird, like I said last week, birds don't go to school to learn to fly. Why? That flight was built into a bird by God Almighty. So the purpose of a bird is to fly, and that flight was built in. So purpose is natural, as we heard last week. We don't need to go to 20 years of schooling to learn our purpose. It came with our birth. And it takes an enormous am amount of unnatural training to brainwash us from our purpose and to be deceived by a world system. And that's what happened to us. Amen. So the first question, God asked Adam, see, after Adam committed sin, God came down to the garden to meet with him. God didn't throw a temper tantrum. You know, God didn't show any hatred toward him. He came down to meet with him as usual. All that Adam needed to do was 
to go to his father and tell father, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I disobeyed you. But Adam didn't do it. Instead, he hid his transgression. As we read in book of Job, he hid his transgression. And we are paying for that consequence even today. Because one man didn't repent or ask God to forgive. If, God, if he had asked God to forgive him, God would have forgiven him. Restoration should have happened right there. So the first question God asked Adam was not, what did you do? Where are you? Because Adam was not in the place where God put him when he came down to meet him. He was hiding behind the bush in the garden. So when we go out of the place where God created and put us, then we are our own to survive, trying to survive. So as a result of sin, Adam lost the garden. God kicked him out of it, which was God's kingdom. He lost it with, with, with losing the garden. He lost the food. He lost the accommodation. He lost the glory of God. And here is man stranded on the earth trying to survive, trying to figure out how to live, what he's going to eat, where he's going to live. That was, that was not God's original plan for mankind. That came as a result of the fall. And that is very important to understand. And we are not under the state of fall now through Jesus Christ. Salvation came and we will read about, study about more about it later. It is impossible for mankind to live without a kingdom because we are created as kings. So because we are created as kings, we need a kingdom to live. We were designed by God to live in a kingdom, not in a democracy, not under a socialist government, not in a communist government, in a kingdom. 500 years ago, this entire earth was ruled by kingdoms. There were only kingdoms on the earth. Then kings became corrupted and began to abuse people and people began to think about other forms of governments. That's what we see today. So either we live in God's kingdom or in the kingdom of darkness, or we will build our own little kingdoms, man's kingdom. So there are three types of kingdoms on the earth today. Kingdom of God, kingdom of darkness, and kingdoms of men. So the next powerful statement that we, I am going to make is our purpose is always connected to this planet Earth in this life and in the next. When God created Adam, God never expected Adam to live this planet. God never expected Adam to die. Adam was created to eternally live on the earth, to rule and reign on behalf of God, to manage this planet, to establish God's kingdom and his will on the earth. Death came because of sin, and sin came because of disobedience. That's why the first chapter of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, says the same thing about our purpose. Genesis 1.26 says God created us and he told us, let them have dominion. What is dominion? The right to rule. Revelation 22 verse 5 says, we, shall, we will be reigning on the new earth forever and forever and forever. So the first chapter of the Bible and the last chapter of the Bible says the same thing about what we will be doing forever. Our purpose is eternal. But our calling is seasonal. That's why we need to understand the difference between purpose and calling. So we have an entire course. After you finish this, I encourage you to take the next course on purpose, calling, and gifts. Mankind collectively has one purpose. When I was growing up in church, I heard great preachers, wonderful preachers saying, Mark has a purpose. Abraham has a different purpose. John has a different purpose. Then Jason has a different purpose. And everybody is confused. We don't know what is our purpose. <laughs> but God made it very clear, just like he made it for other things, why he creating us. 
So Adam means land or Adama means land or ground. That's what it means. By taking our body from the ground, God was saying, your purpose is connected to the earth. God didn't bring a body from heaven. He took our body from the earth and he breathed his spirit into us and we became a living soul. Adam was not created to die. So now, what is kingdom? You know, we heard this word multiple times because most of us grew up in church, went to church all our life, and we may say, oh, we are all about the kingdom, or kingdom is about power, kingdom is about miracle, kingdom is about a particular style of worship or music. What is kingdom? That's the number one thing we should know. So here is the definition for kingdom. Kingdom is a country or a nation or a territory which is natural or spiritual, ruled by a king. By the word kingdom, it is a combination of two words, a king's domain. That is a simple definition of kingdom. In our case, God is a king. He has a country or he has a kingdom that he wants to bring it to earth and establish it here. And that is our original assignment that he gave to us. And that's why we are here. So these definitions are important that you understand and keep it to your heart and replace it with every other previous conceptions you had about kingdom. And kingdom has, kingdom is made of 12 components. Why 12? Because 12 is the number of government in the Bible. Everything God does has a kingdom flavor. See, he has 12 tribes in the Old Testament. Then he selected 12 disciples in the New Testament. Then in the upper room, there were 120 people. That is 10 times 12. Then on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were saved, became part of the ecclesia. That 3,000 is 250 times 12. <laughs> Because it's now 3,003. Why God finished at 3,000? Because that is the governing body of God's kingdom. God formed on the day of Pentecost. So the number one component of a kingdom is a king. Then the second one is government. I did a uh, Facebook Live programs on this for the last three weeks. You can go back and listen to more on it. Because I went detail on it. I don't have the time to go in detail about it right now. So the second component of a kingdom is the government or the ecclesia. That's what we call church. Church is the governing body of God's kingdom. Every nation has a governing body. The United States has a governing body called the Congress or the Senate. England has a governing body called the Parliament. India has a Parliament. Israel has a Neset, kingdom of God as a governing body on this planet earth is called ecclesia or the church that we call. And it is not a literal translation. The word church is a borrowed word by King James translators, which has nothing to do with the word ecclesia. The word church means this is little extra. I'm going to give you for free. You don't have to pay for this. Okay. <laughs> if you study the word church, in detail, the origin of the word church, it came from two words, kirk and kirke. In Old English, it means go around in circle and do circus. That's the word church means, actually. It has nothing to do with the word ecclesia because they replaced it with a foreign word to deceive the people. Because they don't want people to know they are a governing body. They don't want anybody to be a governing or ruling body on this planet Earth. They want to be the only royal family on this planet Earth. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He gave us a revelation. <laughs> then, the, then, then there is family. Every culture, you know, every kingdom has people. Then the fourth one is culture. When we come into God's kingdom, it is very important. We transplant from our culture to the kingdom culture. Whatever culture we grew up in, 
we have to come into kingdom culture. It is different than American culture, Indian culture, Ghanaian culture, Panamian culture, kingdom culture is same internationally. So when you meet a brother or a sister from another country, we are all part of the same culture, same race, part of the same citizen of the same kingdom. De decrease in laws, number five. Then there's an army, every kingdom. We have an angelic army. We are the soldiers in God's army on this planet earth. Every kingdom needs territory, a place to rule, to establish that kingdom, education or teachings, economy or treasury, and then need business or industries. There's media, method of communication, and then agriculture. So those are the 12 components of a kingdom and the kingdom of God has all of those components and Jesus taught about it in the gospels. Media, what do you say, Abraham? You know, did you talk about CNN and Fox News? No, his media of communication was teaching and preaching and writing in the olden days. Now we have social media, we have Zoom, we have Facebook, we have all kinds of ways to to communicate. So the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, this is so important to understand. One mystery that you will find, Matthew is the only gospel that use, no, Matthew only used kingdom of heaven in the gospel of Matthew. There's no phrase kingdom of God in the gospel of Matthew. There's a specific reason for it because Matthew is the first book of the New Testament which announces the arrival of kingdom of heaven to planet earth which we lost but it is coming back John the Baptist came announcing repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so Matthew only uses kingdom of heaven every other gospel uses both of them so kingdom of God means one reveals to whom the kingdom belongs, ownership, like kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. It means a kingdom that belongs to Nebuchadnezzar or kingdom of Cyrus. What does that mean? A kingdom that belongs to Cyrus. It, it shows ownership. Kingdom of heaven means it shows the place it is located or where it is from. Kingdom of Persia or kingdom of Greece. By that, it shows the place where it is coming from. So kingdom of heaven means it's coming from heaven. It is not of this world. Hey. Heaven to this planet earth. That's what Jesus told us to pray. Let your kingdom come. Because it is coming from somewhere. It's coming from heaven. Now, what is the gospel of the kingdom? What is the definition of the gospel of the kingdom? Very simple definition of the gospel of the kingdom is God is king. He has a kingdom. He wants to see established on the earth. That is the simple definition of the gospel of the kingdom. There are different kinds of gospel. There's gospel of salvation, gospel of grace, prosperity gospel. Every denomination has their own gospel. But Jesus and the apostles preached the gospel of the kingdom. And that's what I preach, the gospel of the kingdom. And we are going to see that in detail as we go. So what is the definition of the gospel of the kingdom? God is king. Let's read this together, please, the definition. When I say one, two, three, let's read it. One, two, three. God is king. Is king. He has a kingdom, kingdom that he wants, that he wants to, establish. to establish. That is on the earth. That is the gospel. Yes, Jesus told us to pray the kingdom to come. Matthew 6, this is very famous to us. This is not the Lord's prayer. This is the kingdom prayer. In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God never intended our life on earth to be any different than life in heaven. He wants the same quality of life same culture that is in heaven to manifest on the earth as it is in heaven. Nothing less, nothing more. Somebody say amen. Amen.
That's our task. That is our assignment. To, it's our purpose. To, to realize that dream that God has. We have dreams. Our Heavenly Father has a dream. His dream is to see his kingdom come to this planet Earth. Jesus came to give us a kingdom. He said in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want to go over one word that is not mentioned here. That is from Matthew chapter 11 that many people quote sometime without knowing what they are quoting about. In Matthew 11, Jesus said, Matthew 11 verse 12, you can write that reference down in your notebook. Matthew 11, 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, until now, everybody say until now. Until now. Until, now. until the time that until you're now. saying this. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. That scripture is not applicable to us today because kingdom is already here. We don't take it by force. That verse was spoken by Jesus when John, from the time of John the Baptist until he came. That's what he says. From the days of John the Baptist until now. Until now means it's entered there. It is not continued. Kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. John the Baptist came with the announcement of the kingdom of God. And people got excited. We want the kingdom. That's what we have been waiting for. We lost it. We want to live in it. They got excited. And they want to bring it down. They became violent to take it by force. But when Jesus came, we don't take kingdom by force or by violence. Because why? It is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. That means the Father is so happy to give us the kingdom. When somebody is so happy to give us something, we don't, we don't need to grab it. We don't have to take it by force. We don't need to take, go to heaven to pull down something to earth. It is, our, it is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Jesus told us to preach the kingdom. Matthew 10, verse 7, when he sent his disciples, he said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you are going to see after the day of Pentecost, this is another important point I wanted to capture. After the day of Pentecost, we don't see anybody preaching kingdom at hand or near message. And we will find out why in this course. We don't see anybody, any apostles preaching kingdom near or kingdom at hand message after the day of Pentecost. There's a reason for it. And you will know. So Matthew 10, this is when Jesus sent them to preach, heal the sick, cast out demons. Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and tell them the kingdom of heaven is here. And then Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel, everybody say this gospel. This gospel. Can't hear you. You can hear me? Who is that? Hello. I am here. Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear. Okay, so please unmute something there if you cannot hear me on your computer or phone or whatever tablet you're using. So this gospel means there are other kind of gospels out there. That's why Jesus is specifying this gospel of the kingdom will be preached where? Not just in Jerusalem not in Israel, in all the world, as a witness to all the nations, then the end will come. That is the sign of the end. When is it that the gospel of the kingdom is being preached in all the world and as a witness in all the nations? It hasn't happened yet. 
we went with the gospel of salvation of going to heaven. Now this one is just starting to happen. So when a pandemic or something comes, don't pack your bags. Don't pack your bags to leave this planet. It's no time yet. <laughs> Stay put <laughs> and preach the gospel of the kingdom and we can speed up the process. That's what I'm trying to do. I gave my life for this. I eat and breathe and, and have my being in God's kingdom 24-7. I teach 10 classes a week on the kingdom of God. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So we need more teachers. We need more people who are trained in the kingdom who can go to all the world, to the ends of the nations, that Jesus is a king, he has a kingdom. He wants to see his will coming into that country or that place. And it's going to happen. And it is happening. I have no doubt about it. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Now we are going to see evidences of Jesus and the apostles preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Here's the first verse, Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. If Jesus can preach the gospel of the kingdom, we should be able to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And that's what we should be preaching. And healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 says, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. That is the only gospel Jesus preached. He was full of grace, but grace was not his message. Mm -hmm. Out of his fullness, we received grace for grace, but that was not his message. His message was the kingdom of God. Day in, day out, day night, day out. Kingdom of heaven is like this. Kingdom of heaven is like that. Every parable has to do something with the kingdom. Then he said this, we just read this verse again, Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations. Then the end will come. This is the time piece of the end. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Listen to what Jesus is saying. He say, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent. So why the Father sent Jesus? To preach the kingdom. And he's saying, this is the purpose I have been sent. Nothing else, nothing more. He went to the cross to save us, to get back us into the kingdom. But his message was not the cross. His message was the kingdom. Should we preach the cross? Of course we should. Because it's the power of God to salvation to bring people into the kingdom. After the resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days with the disciples. We read in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, To him he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So even after the resurrection, Jesus had only one subject to talk about, the kingdom. And you're going to see the book of Acts begin with God's kingdom and end with the God's kingdom. And here's another important point evidences of Apostle Paul preaching the gospel of the kingdom. When I go to conferences and preach, people ask me, Pastor, can you show me evidence that Paul preached the kingdom? I want to tell you, if you're an apostle or a prophet, and if you have no revelation of God's kingdom, you are incomplete. No apostle can be an apostle without the revelation of the kingdom of God. No prophet can be a true prophet without the revelation of the kingdom of God because they are the foundation of the church. Yeah. And we are going to see every apostle that is mentioned in the book of Acts preach the kingdom of God. 
So here's the first evidence that Paul preached the kingdom in Acts chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spoke barley for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. So Paul spent three months in this place reasoning. Why? Because people have a problem with the message of the kingdom. So he has to convince them. They, they were stuck in the law of Moses. You had to be circumcised. You had to do this feast. You had to do this and that. He said, no, the purpose of all things was about his kingdom. <laughs> so he spent three months arguing with them, reasoning with them, persuading to believe in the kingdom message. In Acts 14, 22, Jesus, no, Jesus, Paul had an elders conference like we have pastors conference. And he, has, and he exhorted them saying, strengthening the soul of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. My brothers and my sisters, I have to warn you. <laughs> In the process of you entering God's kingdom, if you are interested in it, if you are committed to it, that you want to live in God's kingdom, you will have to go through many tribulations. This is not talking about great tribulation. This is talking about pressure, the enemy's opposition, because the devil will do all he can to keep humans away from God's kingdom. He just wanted to be a good Christian and make it to heaven and die and go to heaven as soon as possible. Acts 20 verse 25. Another evidence, Paul's preaching the kingdom. And indeed now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching. So what was Paul preaching? Going around everywhere he went, preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. This is a farewell speech of Paul to the churches that he established. He says, I've been going around to you, among you, preaching the kingdom. Everybody say, preaching the kingdom of God. Preaching the kingdom of preaching God. The, 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 preaching the kingdom, the kingdom of God. God. Preaching the so kingdom of God. The chapter of Book of Acts, it has two evidences of Paul preaching the kingdom of God. Acts 28, 23 says, so when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the upcoming Kingdom rapture. Of God. <laughs> no, the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. <laughs> Wow. Evening, kingdom of God and things concerning Jesus Christ. And this is the last verse of the book of Acts. Verse 30 and 31. It says, Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him preaching the kingdom of God. So Paul had only one subject, just like Jesus. Everywhere he went, Anywhere he went, kingdom of God, he preached the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concerns the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. May the Lord grant to you confidence to preach the gospel of the kingdom with the yes. in Jesus' name. Receive that boldness right now. God is imparting a boldness to you through the screen by the Holy Spirit. A boldness and confidence to preach the gospel of the kingdom like Paul did, like Jesus did. And do not be afraid of man. No. Or woman. Because it's a trap. There's only one thing that will keep you away from fulfilling your destiny is the fear of man. Because our destiny and calling is so unique. Every time you, God tells you to do something, the first thought the enemy will bring it, what my uncle will think if I do this? What my neighbor will think? What my friend and my brother will think? If I had thought like that, I would have remained and sleeping on a cement floor now in a country called India. 
because I slept on a cement floor, concrete floor, until I was 18 years old. <laughs> That's when I saw the revelation of the kingdom of God. I didn't even know it was the kingdom of God. I ran. I got into a train for three days, traveled to the northern part of India. My parents and my brothers said, you are going to die there because you don't know the language. You don't like the food because it's a different country that you're traveling to. I had to be in a train just like Jesus and Jonah was in the belly of the fish on the cross or in the grave for three days in a train. In a, in a, that train is not like the train here. Cockroaches and, and mice and rats infested train. But thank God I took a step. And here I am preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the nations of the world training people that's where it started because i saw something when i was born again according to jesus when you're born again you have to see the kingdom john chapter 3 verse 3 peter preached the kingdom of god for a long time because of the blindness of the religious spirit i did not understand peter preached about the kingdom on the day of pentecost can you believe that? Because I, I believed by other preachers saying Peter preached repentance on the day of Pentecost. No, 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 no. He did not preach repentance. After hearing his message, when people came to Peter and asked, what shall we do now? That's when he said, repent. But his message was not about repentance. What was Peter's message? It was about the kingdom of God, but where it, where is it? So when Peter stood up to preach, he was not sitting there with a notebook and a pen and a prepared message to preach when the Holy Spirit came. It was all given to him by the Holy Spirit. He started out by saying, Joel, quoting Joel, at the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh then the, the half of his message is about David. Why would Peter preach about David on the day of Pentecost? What David has to do with the church and the inauguration of the church or the ecclesia on the day of Pentecost? I didn't understand it for a long time because David is a key person in God's kingdom. Like I think I shared that before in this class or other class, David is the first individual on this planet Earth who received the revelation that God is a king and he has a kingdom. And he began to write about it. And when Luke, God looked at from heaven, he became so excited. There is one man on Earth who understands who I am, my heart, and my kingdom, and I'm going to bless him. That's why God looked at David and said, this is the man after my own heart. Not and we were taught that God said that about David because of his music. No, because of the heart of a king, David understood who God is and about his kingdom. And God made a, an eternal covenant with David and his seed in 2 Samuel chapter 7. He said, your kingdom and your throne will remain forever and ever and jesus is the fulfillment of that promise god made with david that's why jesus was called the son of david by people in the gospels because he is the fulfillment of that promise god made with david and jesus inherited that throne from david and he will reign on the earth sitting on David's throne. That's what G Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, saying, by raising Jesus from the dead, he fulfilled the promise he made to our father David. And when the Jewish people heard it, it made sense to them, and they ran to Peter and asked, what shall we do now? We hear you, what you're saying is true. What shall we do now? Then he said, repent, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bang! The ecclesia was formed on the day of Pentecost. That 
So Peter preached the kingdom from the historical perspective, from the Jewish understanding, because the people, those who were here, there in Jerusalem, there were Jewish people from every nation under heaven in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. That's what it says in Acts chapter 2. Every nation under heaven, there were people, Jewish people from, they were there in Jerusalem. And the general assembly of the kingdom was formed in that day. Philip the apostle preached the kingdom of God. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. When Philip went to Samaria, he preached the kingdom. So Jesus preached, Paul preached, Peter preached, and Philip preached the kingdom of God. So now we are going to deal with the misunderstandings about the kingdom. You may have heard some of those things. So ignore the last two and I'm going to start from the top. So miracles and healing are kingdom. So because when some people think about kingdom, they only think about the power of the kingdom. Kingdom has power. Miracles and signs are a healing are a sign of the kingdom. That's not the whole kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is the culture of the kingdom. So don't just limit the kingdom with miracles. There's much more than miracles and healing in the kingdom. Then the other misunderstanding is people think because Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So his kingdom cannot be on the earth right now because it's not of this world. <laughs> What does that mean? We know, we said that before. Jesus said, my kingdom come. It is coming from another place, from heaven. But he never said, my kingdom is not in this world. It is not of this world means it is not like the kingdoms of this world. It is coming from kingdom, from heaven. But it is very much present on the earth right now as I speak. The third misunderstanding of the kingdom is there is no food or natural things in the kingdom because it's a spiritual kingdom. Kingdom of God has plenty of food and his kingdom has been feeding the entire planet for hundreds and thousands of years and still there's no lack of food. Every creature he created, God feeds them. And Jesus said in his kingdom, give us this day our daily bread. That means there is food in his kingdom. God poured out food from heaven for the people of Israel and fed them for 40 years. So Matthew 26, 29, Jesus said, I will not eat from the fruit of the wine and drink, eat the, eat the bread and drink the fruit of the wine until I sit in my father's kingdom. There's plenty of food in God's kingdom. The, the next misunderstanding of God's kingdom, kingdom of God is seeking God's kingdom means doing ministry or getting baptized or going to church on a Sunday morning. That's not what it means. Next one is kingdom means going to church on a Sundays. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> or seeking God's kingdom means getting closer to God. How can you get closer to somebody who living lives in you? He is in you 24-7. The Father is in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. So you cannot get closer to him. You can change your perception and Pull down the strongholds of lies that, that the enemy made us believe about him. Then the next misunderstanding is the kingdom will come only during the millennial reign. There's no kingdom now. I'm going to give you a mystery, a key right now. Ready? How does or how will the kingdom 
will look like when it manifests in the natural now, in our day and time. Okay? When God called out the people of Israel out of Egypt in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, God said, I want you to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation to the people of Israel. So when they went to the promised land, they were establishing God's kingdom. They were a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So when the kingdom manifests, it will look like how the people of Israel lived in the promised land under the reign and rule of God. That's how it will look like in our day and time. We are supposed to be living like the people of Israel lived because we are a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation right now. But unfortunately, majority of the church world thinking it is still in Jerusalem or in Israel because they don't know who we are in Christ. So that is the next misunderstanding. Kingdom is only for the Jewish people. No. Kingdom is for every human being that are born on this planet Earth. From every nation, every tongue, every culture, every country, kingdom of God is for them. So the next question is, what is kingdom age? Because we are thinking we have to wait until we are raptured, then Jesus comes back during the millennial reign, then the kingdom age is going to begin. No. Kingdom age means the period of time in which God began to rule this planet with his kingdom. That is the kingdom age. When did it begin? In the book of Genesis. That's when God's rule began on this planet earth. So kingdom age began in the book of Genesis. But the manifestation of it will change and varies age to age, time to time, with the cooperation of mankind. How much mankind is ready to cooperate with God? How much kingdom do we want to see coming to planet Earth? We are the one who decides it. Oh, that's so, that's so very key. My brothers, sisters. We are the one who decide how much kingdom we want to see right now on the earth, not God. Remember that verse Jesus is saying, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He gave us the whole kingdom. He gave us the keys of his kingdom. So we decide now how much we want to see it manifest. Somebody say amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We decide it, my people, not God. He is waiting for us, not we yes, are waiting he is. for him. Yes. He wants to see God's kingdom come into the educational field of the United States. I thank God for my brother Jason. He's a principal of a school. How do we bring God's kingdom and will into the educational system of this country instead of the agenda of the kingdom of darkness being implemented into the school system so that our kids have no clue who they are, why they're here, are they male or a female, man or a woman, they have no clue. And it is our job to see God's kingdom come to the educational field, to the government, to the agriculture, Instead of food, is being used to kill people, to make them sick, to make money for some pharmaceuticals. We have to in, in, implement kingdom agriculture in the nations of the world. Food is supposed to be the medicine, not poison. Yes. That was God's plan in Genesis. He never intended for us to depend on this kind of chemical stuff genetically modified things to eat and destroy our kidneys our heart and our liver <laughs> no but somebody has to do this the church is supposed to do this but we have been doing kumbaya every sunday morning instead of training people to manifest god's kingdom on the earth 
because we are waiting for God to do something when he already did everything he has to do and he is waiting for us. So that is the kingdom age. Why Jesus told us to seek his kingdom first. I think we will finish it here for today because otherwise it will be too much for you to handle. <laughs> See, Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, what do we need to seek first? Kingdom. His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. He told us to seek first. The first, the kingdom. The kingdom. So when Jesus the means, when, when Jesus says first, he means first. Not after 50 years, you've been a Christian. Now you seek God's kingdom. No. First thing in life, before we get married, before we seek a job, before we go to college, first thing we need to do, he didn't say seek him first, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. Then all the things, because our purpose, our provision, our food, everything is connected to his kingdom assignment. So before you get trapped into the Babylonian system, Jesus is saying, you seek this first. Because if you get trapped into the Babylonian system and the mindset of survival, it is difficult for you to change and come into his kingdom. But it has to happen because we all grew up in Babylonian system, our own culture of different countries. Now he's telling us to seek his God's kingdom because, number one, I think we'll just finish this. Man is designed and created to live in and build a kingdom. Like I said before, either we will build God's kingdom or our own kingdom or the kingdom of darkness. Unfortunately, the enemy is using the church, God's people, to build his kingdom. Can you believe that? The devil is using... God's people to build his kingdom Monday through Friday. Yes, he is. Sad. When we come to church on Sunday, we think we are doing God some favor. No. 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 Every minute we have, every ability, skill, and time we have, we're supposed to be used to establish God's kingdom our entire life, not just two hours on a Sunday morning. Mankind is worried about their basic needs. Why people cheat, bribe, all kinds of evil happening on this world because they are afraid if they don't do that, they won't be able to survive. So corruption is a result. Murder, lying, cheating, stealing, all comes because people are worried that their, their need won't be taken care of. But in the kingdom, once you come into God's kingdom, every need that we have will be taken care of by our King Jesus. That is his promise. Jesus knows the side effect of worry and stress. That is the major cause of every dis-ease that people experience is worry and stress. That's why he told us in Matthew chapter 6 three times, do not worry about what you're going to eat. Do not worry what you're going to wear. Do not worry about tomorrow. Mankind is searching for a lost country. Since Adam lost the garden. Oh, this is so powerful. I wanted to capture this. Since Adam lost the garden of Eden, which is God's kingdom, every human on this planet Earth, their spirit man is longing for a lost country and we think it is a country on this planet earth so people began to migrate from one country to the other country you know people think all over the world if i reach a developed country like america or britain or germany then all my problems will be over so people walk and swim through the oceans and rivers thousands of miles to get to this country because their understanding is they get here somehow, their problem will be over, they'll be rich, they'll have a mansion, and they will have everything else we need. But what I found when I came to this country, 
people in this country of United States are looking to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. They are tired of the life here. Hundreds of people surrender their passport, U.S. passport, and move to other countries every year now. Because what they are not recognizing is what they are searching for is not a country on this earth. Their spirit man is longing for the kingdom of God, which Adam lost when he fell and was kicked out of the garden. And that was restored by Jesus Christ. When you discover God's kingdom and live in it, the first time you will feel home in your spirit man. When I'm in Kenya, I feel home because I don't live in Kenya. I live in God's kingdom. When I go to Panama, I'm going to feel home in Panama because I don't live there. I am in God's kingdom. So when you're in God's kingdom, you feel home anywhere on this planet because this planet is his property. Mankind is longing for a righteous government. Every few years, we elect our leaders, expecting them to deliver what they promise and do righteousness. But then we get disappointed. But only government can give righteousness. That is the kingdom government, God's government, God's rule. Social and racial problems among mankind will be over only when people come to God's kingdom. When you are part of a denomination, you know, that denomination will only mingle with that particular group. This group will only mingle with that group. But in the kingdom, we are all one. We are not identified by the color of our skin. We are identified by the person whom we belong. Our King Jesus, we have the same culture, we have the same language, we have the same identity because we are created in the image and likeness of God. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. amen. And the last reason Jesus told us to seek his kingdom first because it is the priority of Jesus. That's why he preached day and night, beginning till the end, first day to the last day, one message. He wants to see his kingdom. Then he told us to pray for his kingdom to come, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So with that, we will end today's lesson. We will pick it back where we leave off today. I hope you grasp everything, what the Holy Spirit was trying to communicate. And uh, now is the time for questions comments or feedback and if you have a question just show me your hand i will unmute patricia you had to unmute there okay can you hear me yes i have two questions what was the um the these last seven things you were just saying what was the the heading on that why jesus told us to seek his kingdom first okay. thank you you're welcome and um, I tried to buy a paperback book of the second edition, and I couldn't find that anywhere. Is that out, or is it just what we got digitally? Do you want it printed? Yes. Okay, so there is on our website, but it's the cover. The icon of the book is the old version, but when you order it, the new book will come to you. Oh, okay. Got it. Great. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the same book. But it's a second okay. Edition. I have to make that change actually on the, on, the, on the shop, but I didn't do that. But when you order it, you will receive the second edition. Oh, good. Thank you. You're Yay. welcome. Thank you. I like the paper. <laughs> yeah. I write in so really it. Like to hold the book and read it, not yeah. look in the screen. I write in it and mark it up. It's <laughs> good. Anybody else have any questions, comments, feedback? Thomas and Mark. Hey, Thomas. Okay. All right. Uh, there, I, I'm, I'm talking about kingdom. Like you said, that the kingdom means the right to rule. Now, I'm trying to understand it from the 
the the the the, the blueprint that is from Genesis chapter one verse twenty six that uh, we we quoted. And uh, what I'm trying to see is that when we're talking about kingdom, I'm seeing that you know God God created uh, man in His image and likeness. And, and God is a king, so man too is a king. And we ask man to have dominion. Mm -hmm. So a king having dominion, I believe that is what brings the idea of kingdom. Mm -hmm. So uh, can, can I say that? Is it right? Is it, does it form the blueprint uh, in Genesis 1, 26? Yeah. The, the, kingdom. the kingdom is the country. Mm. The definition of kingdom we learned today, kingdom is a country or a territory ruled by a okay. king. Yeah, you know, you broke it into two. So it's made of a king having dominion. King's domain. Yeah, kingdom is king's domain. The king's domain. Then dominion yeah. is our purpose in the kingdom. Okay. kingdom or on the earth. Dominion means okay. the right to rule. Okay. Delegated authority or the right to rule. That is what dominion means. Okay. But you know what? Oh, well, then I'm coming to dinner. And you know what she said? all rule the same way. My family would love to have you for dinner. Huh? And she goes, we have Give me our own sphere of rulership based on what we are called to do. Yeah. Our calling is different. Our purpose is same. Okay. okay. Remember one time uh, somebody asked Jesus that, I mean, uh, uh, how do we know that the kingdom has come? How do we know that the kingdom has come? And he was saying that the kingdom that has come will be careful of them. Let me, let me mute everybody else so we can hear. Then I will unmute you. Okay. Yeah, he, said that, he asked the question that, how, how do we know that the kingdom has come? And mm -hmm. he said that the kingdom of God does not come by careful observation. Yeah. You will not know that here is this or here is that. For the kingdom is what's within you. Yeah. It's within you. Yeah. So I was, I was getting the concept that the kingdom is something that was, it was used to build us. Like we were built as kings who were supposed to have dominion. Yeah. And that's why... He said that the kingdom was given to us since the foundation of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that is the understanding I was trying to get. And that's why I want to see whether I'm, I'm correct. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. You, you are correct. Kingdom of God is within, as Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 17. But what is in us needs to manifest outside. And that happens through the work or the calling God has upon us. The kingdom that will manifest through me will be different than how the kingdom will manifest through you or through Wilda, through Patty, through Sabrina, because we're all called to do something different in the kingdom and we all pieces of the same puzzle. Mm -hmm. When we all fulfill what we are called to do, the fullness of the kingdom will manifest on the earth. Somebody is okay. called to be in the government. Somebody is called to be a teacher. Somebody is called to be a principal. Somebody is called to be a businessman. And every component of the kingdom will manifest through each one of us. That's right. That's it is right. in us. That's right. Okay. Hi, no, Abraham. No. It's, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I see, a, I see a Mark raise his hands before. So let me, and then I will come back to you, Sabrina. Mark, you had to unmute it there from there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Very good teaching. We enjoyed. Oh, you're welcome. Not only enjoyed, we learned. <laughs> so my question is, you are talking about the gospel of grace, the gospel of kingdom. So there is a people, some people, they just like uh, uh, talking. Uh, the Paul, when he said, if anyone bring the other gospel, don't receive that gospel. And some grace people, I'm not 100% really agree with that, but they are saying, actually the gospel is gospel of grace that Paul was saying in a Fijian, I think, where I don't know exactly the reference now, but where 
says that if, an, if anyone come or angel come with other gospel, don't receive them. So I just please. showed you five references what Paul was preaching. Did you see that? I, I'm agree. <laughs> but you <laughs> uh, so this is the so they say that because of the misunderstanding about grace and the kingdom. See, kingdom is the country, grace is the governing system of that country. Okay. So in technical term, grace is the hardware. Grace is the software. And we heard about what Jesus was preaching. He didn't come preaching the gospel of grace. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He has to bring the kingdom, but he was full of grace. So we need both. One won't work without the other. So if you just go after grace and no kingdom, there's no country to function. But if you only have kingdom, no grace, there's no way to operate that kingdom. Yeah. So that's why in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 28, tell this, tell this verse to everybody who's telling you that question. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Hmm. Why, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace. So what is first? Kingdom first, not grace. Because yep. the kingdom won't work without the grace and grace has no use without the kingdom. Thank you. That is a short answer for the long question. <laughs> okay, where is Sabrina? Uh, yes. Sabrina, you need to uh, unmute there, please. Yeah. There we go. Can yeah. you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so I just want to get the understanding because I was wondering how much of our vocation actually works and so you made me think about this when you said some of us are to be teachers or some of us are to be principals so for me my calling is the reason why i even came to colorado is i was called um to be a counselor so i've gone to school you know got the degree and now that's what i'm doing in counseling so my kingdom then would be the counseling realm or yeah, i guess that's what you're called to do bringing mm -hmm. Through the council, you're bringing God's kingdom into people's life. How to live in God's kingdom. Okay. Okay. Because whatever. So that, would, that would be like my clients or my colleagues and people that are in that realm of counseling, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whatever you're called to do. But there's a difference between a profession and a calling. Okay. That you're doing something as a profession or a job. That is yeah. different than your calling. And we will study okay. that more later. Okay, how, okay. How to differentiate that. How would you differentiate whether you're doing a job or you're fulfilling a calling? Right. Because we, that's, that's important to know. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Because we're all brought up in a culture. Okay, you got to go to school, get a college, mm -hmm. get a degree, then you get a job, make yep. a <laughs> that is the normal thing, but that's not may not be what God has called you to do. Yeah. So discovering okay. our calling is important. Okay, good. And we will, okay. That is the whole purpose of this course is to help people discover their purpose, calling, and gifts. Yeah. So we are just okay. This yeah, okay. Because in my head right now, I believe that's why I'm in this state, but it would be nice if I learned something different. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, God, God you know, called me here. <laughs> the best way to test is the heart. If your heart is crying out to do something different, that means there is something there. Okay. Yeah. And I truly believe that I'm doing, because um, I'm working with the homeless right now. And that's, that's, I feel like that's my niche. Like that's where I would really need to be right now. Like, and I, I know what you mean by that. Cause when I was in corporate America, I had that 
compelling to leave and do something else and I didn't know what it was and that's why I, I did this, you know um prayer and fasting and then you know like what am I here to do and so this is kind of the road God showed me so that's even why I came to this state yeah okay excellent good points anybody has any questions comments I don't see any other hands I'm looking through before we start praying. Uh, Nanette, welcome. I didn't say greetings to you before. Paula, you have a question? Did I see your hand? Yes, yes, sir. Um, I was wondering, I'd like to revisit this class again. Um, will you be showing it on, um, having it on video um, on YouTube again? YouTube? Yeah, yeah, every lesson will be uploaded onto YouTube under the channel of the Kingdom School within 24 hours. So you get to watch it as many as times you want it at your convenience. Okay, there's a lot of meat in here. So I'd like you know, to dissect. <laughs> yeah, there's mm -hmm. more. You have to listen to that at least three times <laughs> before the next class to get everything, or at least half of it. Because then another important thing i would like to request to you find somebody that you can share with what you learned here a friend church member neighbor anybody on the phone somewhere when you share with somebody what you learned it become part of you because now your brain is so full of information and two days later it will vaporize and disappear but when you share with somebody, it become part of your heart. You own it. So that is part of exercise of being part of the school, of taking this course. You know, you share with somebody and you may not have all the answers. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to share what you know. And the Holy Spirit will give you the answers. Well, I mean, this is like a, you know, I've been in church all my life and it seems like, the scriptures were preached to mean something else. <laughs> and so this is, it's like a, a whole different programming of the mind. Yeah. Mindset. Kingdom mindset. Yes. It's all, so, different. all different mindset, how kingdom operate than what we were raised in church or with the religious mindset that we don't belong here. We're waiting to disappear. We're going to heaven. Yeah, we are singing, you know, <laughs> this world is not my home, or, or take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And the, yeah. and the devil took that opportunity, and he took the world, and we lost the whole world, but we have Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and we will learn about the world and the earth, why God so loved the world, the cosmos. And you will learn mm -hmm. about it in the future. Well, the big song that is coming through my mind is, when we all get to heaven, what a glorious time it will be. You know, that, <laughs> I mean, that's what we, we sang about. We were going to heaven, you know, when we all get there, it's going to be wonderful. So <laughs> it's going to bring us back again on earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, but <laughs> I have to tell you the truth. Yes, Nanette, I see your hand. You have to unmute it there, please. Yeah, you're on. I had a hard time getting in today. I, I had to go to a different one of your messages that came like through email. So I don't know why it said that a meeting was already in progress and it wouldn't let me in. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I had to go to a different one of the messages that came before I could get in. That's why I was late. I kept trying and trying to get in. So that's why I was late. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Same meeting ID for the entire course. So please maybe take a picture on your phone. No, I have it. I have the ID, but that wasn't what the issue was. So I don't know what it was. I had to go to a different one of the messages that came to me from your uh, Jim Yamans or humans or something like that. Yeah. He is my administrator. Yeah. The one who so was thankfully up. I was able to figure it out. Yeah. Please, I'm sorry, but please you can watch it. Whatever you missed on YouTube. Yeah, I will. I will. Please watch it and take notes. So when the other gal was talking about 
her calling. Yes. It seems to me like your calling would be something that uh, the purpose that God would have for you in your life. Yeah, your calling was predetermined before you arrived on this planet. Yeah, see, I was a, I'm a nurse, but I'm not doing that anymore. But I always felt like I was called to be a nurse. Okay. So I always thought that the whole time I, you know, that was, I always felt that was what I was supposed to be doing at that time. Now, I'm not quite so sure. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, yeah, anyway, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Just hold on a few more weeks. God will make it. Now, I'm not saying you will know the whole thing, but you will have a, a glimpse of what God has called when you take this couple of courses on the kingdom. The next course is purpose, calling, and gifts. That's what we specialize on. Okay. So this is the introduction to the kingdom. Then we go into the purpose, calling, and gifts. What is okay. our purpose? How we identify what we are called to do then what are the gifts that God gave it to us to fulfill that calling? We came with it to this planet. Like birds flying, it's natural. Birds, right, right. Birds don't go to school to learn to fly. So our purpose is natural to us. But then there are times that we may go to school to specialize in some knowledge. Like if you want to be a doctor, to be a pilot, then you go and learn what you need, but don't go to find a job as a job. Because we grew up in a culture like that. Yeah, I get that. When you're calling, then you go to, my prayer is that every young man and woman on this planet Earth will take this kingdom school before they go to college. Pray that it will happen, that we will have youth camps, children's camps, to help them discover their purpose and their calling. Then if they have to go to college, let them go and, and learn what they need to learn. So thank you for that comment. Well, we're almost out of time. Let's spend two minutes in prayer. Pray for each other. Pray that this kingdom school, God will enable us to start in every country, in every state, every town on this planet Earth. And every church need a kingdom school. Every school need a kingdom school, like a public school. Every Christian business need a kingdom school that train people on their purpose empowering them to bring God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for the people that you see on the screen, their name or their face, and pray for kingdom schools to be established, not only now, but in your personal prayer. Include that prayer request, please, that you would, uh, God will use this because people need it. This is the solution to the dilemma out there in the world. So you can unmute the phone. Let's pray for two minutes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Father, I pray for her. Brother, Jason Paul. Thank you that you have come in the age of building who you are and who we are inside our hearts. Lord, we thank you.
for this evening, Father. Thank you for the word of the kingdom we heard. Let that seed be planted in every hearts and bring forth fruit in hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold, Father. I rebuke the enemy. You will not steal this word from the hearts of the people. It will remain, it will get planted and take roots in Jesus Christ's holy name. I bless them with favor. Thank you for making your kingdom so real to us, Father, and our assignment in it, your assignment for us, and your righteousness for us, Father, and our calling and the gifts that you deposited into our spirit man when you released us to this planet Earth. I thank you for making it so clear, and we bless you, and we give you all the glory, praise, and power, strength, and wisdom belongs to you, my God. In Jesus' name. I pray and everybody said amen and amen. 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 Felicity. So these yes. are absolutely free. You don't we don't charge you anything, but I have two things to ask you in return for teaching you this course. One thing is before the end of this course, I would like you to write a testimony. How did this course impacted your life? Maybe at the end of the course. How was it a blessing to you personally? Just two sentences. Don't write to me an essay. Don't write a book to me. <laughs> Just two lines, two sentences is enough. Maybe take three minutes of your time. That's what I'm asking for in return. The second thing I'm asking in return is that you will tell two other people about this course. Your friends. Tell them, hey, there's a kingdom school up there. There's a crazy guy who's teaching about the kingdom of God. You need to go and attend it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he introduced, he introduced the school to two people. Is that possible? Yeah. Uh, Is there any homework? Yes. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Chapters two and three of the book, Rediscovering the Lost Kingdom, second edition, not the first edition. There's a new edition of that book available online. It's free. You can download it, enter your name and your email. It will come to your email. So chapters two and three and four, actually three, three chapters, two, three, and four. And Revelation 21 and 22. In the Bible, the book of Revelation, Chapters 21 and 22, last time you read Genesis 1 and 2, now compare Genesis 1 and 2 with Revelation 21 and 22. And then the three chapters of the book, 2, 3, and 4. That's the reading assignment. Thank you for reminding me that, Patty. Appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you said something, Abraham, you said something about the second book. So I should not download the first book, but I should download the second book? This is the second edition of the same book okay. that we are using for this course, Rediscovering the Lost Kingdom, second edition, which is available okay. for free online on our website, anybody who wants it. Okay, thanks. If you want a printed version, you had to order it and you had to pay for it. Um, excuse me, how do I know if I have the um, second or first edition? Uh, it will say inside on the second page, second edition. On the second page? Yeah. Where the copyright pages information is there, it will say there, second edition, or it will be a big format. The second edition is in, in bigger size, in bigger in size. The first edition was a small book. This one is big. Okay, thank you so okay. much. Have a wonderful, thank you. wonderful day. I'll see you next you. Week. Same place. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll keep each other in prayers. God bless you. Bye. 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 Bye.